Good morning, welcome, welcome, welcome. Hello, hello, hello. So yesterday I finished, I ended up painting a little bit more yesterday um, and I finished Jesus' face, did just tiny touch-ups to Mary's face. Um, but that's what it ended up looking like. Yay. Um, the time lapse of that is going to be my post today on Instagram and Facebook. So if you want to see the end of the process or what that like three and a half hours looked like, um, go check out the post today. Um, I think that's all I want to say about it. <laughs> oh, oh, I did it because I only, I ended up only painting for like 30 minutes, 30 to 40 minutes. And I was like, that's not going to be a good stream. Like, I don't want to just start streaming. And then end, like, right away. So I decided to get this one prepped. This is um, The Annunciation by Philippe de Champagne. Yes, he's French. <laughs> um, from the 1600s. Um, and the whole painting itself is very large. Um, and you got the angel, you have the Holy Spirit coming in, all these different things. And zooming in just on Mary's face, it's, like, making me think more about The Annunciation and kind of delving deeper. Um which is something I didn't really think about when I was just finding good, essentially, portraits of Mary to do as master copies. Just grabbing another guy. Is how, like, these famous paintings, um, yeah, they, like, you can sit and, I don't know what I'm trying to say. Like, zooming in, zooming in on Mary's face within these greater context paintings can you know, draw you in more into the actual, um, the actual scene. Um, so yeah, she's hearing the angel Gabriel saying you're going to be the mother of God. There you have it. So I'm just setting up the palette. Um, I threw the extra paint from last night or yesterday on to the palette, or I'm sorry, onto this little piece of tracing paper. This is not going to be enough of this brown. It's the burnt umber. Usually burnt umber and raw umber get tacky. Yeah, like that's not going to be good for today. Um, but the cadmiums, the alizarin, the ultramarine are usually good for even like multiple days. So good morning. If you want to say hi in the chat, say hi and I'll say hi back. <laughs> um, so those five colors are good. And then I'm going to grab raw umber. Um, and whenever I'm setting up the palette, I always just put a little bit down and then mush it around in case there's any. Oh, there's also a giant little crusty right there. Ugh, don't want that. Um, but just kind of mush it around in case there's any oil that came out of the tube that wasn't mixed in. Um, so I put it, oh, see, like that, it just splattered everywhere. Um, that probably is fine. And then I need Blue Ridge Yellow Ochre. Um, in the description, I have a list of all the colors in the order that they're going to be on the palette. So if you want to know what colors I use, that's it's down there. Um, I have a variety of Gamlin, Windsor and Newton, and Rublev. Um, mostly because only in the past few months have I really, <laughs> like, yeah, learned more about professional oil paints. I used to just paint with the Hobby Lobby brand because it was super cheap and I was just practicing and seeing if I liked oil paints. Um, but recently I've been researching more and like Gamlin was the first one that I was like, okay, that's the first like next step between student and professional. And Gamlin's really nice. Um, it's similar to Windsor and Newton. They're kind of on the same par, except Gamlin's a little bit cheaper. Uh, but then I was introduced to Rublev. And Rublev, I was talking about this a little bit yesterday, but it was almost at the end. So um, Rublev doesn't add any... Huh! There was some brown on that. Ah! Okay, just kind of wipe that up and <laughs> wipe that off. Uh, Rublev doesn't add any extra, uh, anything extra to their oil paints besides the oil medium and the pigment, which makes it as accurate to what the masters would have used, um, through the ages. And, um, 
right it was only like with the industrial revolution that we started having man-made products that we would add to the paints um and they don't last well it's not really that good to use them if you want your painting to last like hundreds of years because uh, some of the paints of these old masters when they're done some ways they're very archival some ways they're very not archival and we're kind of seeing what makes something more archival versus not um yeah lots of little things one of the things that helps is doing it painting on panels instead of on stretched canvas oh my goodness okay i'm trying to wipe and i'm just getting more paint everywhere do 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 wipe it off all right I will mix again up like I did yesterday. Can you see that? Perfect. All right, so for faces, I get three pools of white. Is that gonna be in? Oh, I just knocked that over. Um, the one on the left, I like to add just a little bit of cadmium yellow, and today we are gonna add much less than I did yesterday. There we go, that's a much better color. I don't know if you can really tell. The This palette is a wood palette, um, and I make sure I clean it really well every night, which means that the oils within the oil paint really blend in with the palette or, and they make it shiny, um, which makes it a nice, really good slick surface to use to mix paints and it's not absorb absorptive, um, but it makes it a little shiny for, uh, you know, streaming. <laughs> um, so that one has cadmium red and cadmium yellow as a peachy pink color, and then this one is just pink. Um, and a good base colors for skin tones, trying to keep the skin tone colors um, really simple. So if I start with just these colors versus making some sort of complicated mix, uh, these are really good. I think, oh my goodness. In my mind, I was supposed to make that lighter, and then I just made it just horrendously darker. Okay, that's fine. I'm actually going to leave it. It's fine. Like I said, they're, it's simple mixes, but it's also just getting sort of, just getting a new pool of paint. It's not it's not that important to be super accurate with these in the beginning. Um, but I'm going to grab a little bit of that for the peachy pink color, and then for the yellow. The cadmiums, they are very strong. This white paint is not, not strong. In fact, when I first started doing oil paints... Or not when I first started. When I first started getting better oil paints and going out of the student brands and into the professional brands, the first ones I got were was a white. Um, and that difference to have a white that has that punch and doesn't is not super weak and just get destroyed by any color you put in it, 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 it was a game changer. That's when I was like, I really like oil paints. When you can mix colors together and not just immediately lose everything. Um, all that... You know, you can put the slightest bit of one color in and then just absolutely destroy the color. It's like, ah, oh, it's frustrating. Um, so getting that white was really good. So this is a cat, no, cadmium red plus yellow ochre, which I really like as a, as sort of an intermediate skin tone that doesn't have any white. So it's a little bit better for the shadows. I want this one to be a bit more red. I also put this a little bit far over. I don't usually put it all the way over here. Ah, that was seat, and then I put too much right there. Okay, that's okay. These ones I try to just get out um, and onto the palette. Okay, I put that in the wrong spot. Uh, Cad, nope, ochre, and then black as a green color that's really sympathetic to skin tones. Because uh, one thing about faces is that our foreheads are more, when you're painting, when you're just looking at people, they, well, actually they do look like this a bit. But when you're painting, it's really helpful. Um, to remember this, the forehead is more yellow the cheeks and the eyes are more red, and the chin is more green, even on girls. Because on guys, it would be like a, you know, a five o'clock shadow kind of look, and it really gets very green um, around the chin. Um, but just remembering that helps bring a portrait to life a lot. Just like with that subtle adjustment of doing a little bit more yellow up here, a little bit more pink down here, and a little bit more green down there. Um, it brings the painting to life. And when I started doing that with my portraits, it was pretty much a game changer. That's when I was like, hey, wait, I can actually do this. So I'm making a quick mix of alizarin and black. 
And I put a little bit too much alizarin in there. Alizarin and black makes a really nice warm dark color because black itself is a blue. That's why there's two yellows, two reds, and only one blue, because that's the other blue. Um, and then I think I want a little bit of the umber, raw umber with alizarin and black. Okay, this is like way too much. Actually, no, this is not, because the whole background is dark. This will be probably most likely the color I use for the background. The umber makes the black also a lot less blue and umber and black makes a really nice neutral black um, but the ivory black is a very i mean it's useful as a blue which is why it's good to have on the palette and that's it right that's it okay so those are the bases i use for when i'm mixing for portraits so this one is that okay if i want to move this a little bit back and shake everything up so Putting that to the side, moving, okay, I'm gonna move this painting from yesterday a little bit farther away in case I accidentally hit it. All right, so like yesterday, I'm gonna start from the background and work my way to the face, sort of as a warm up, and so that I have um, all of the darker colors around because her face is very light, but it's not pure white. It's actually even, I was gonna say it's less white than the one from yesterday. It definitely has more shadows. So to get the darks in in the background is really going to help define how light and how dark the other places are. I'm trying to decide what size brush I want to use. I'm going to use this filbert. It's kind of big. It's on the big side. Actually, it might be... No, I have a... <laughs> it's a size 10 from Ebony Splendor. I actually, I really like these brushes um, a lot. It's the... They're from... By Creative Mark, the Ebony Splendor ones. They're at Jerry's Artorama. I, I've never seen them in stores. I've only ever seen them there. But they're really nice with oils. I think they're said to be watercolor brushes or like acrylic brushes because they're pretty soft. Um, but they're nice. Like, they're not super stiff. They have good spring, as the artists say. Um, <laughs> I find less so with the bigger brushes. They're a little bit more unruly when it's big. They're a little too soft. But the small brushes, it's like the perfect amount of bend and snap. <laughs> um... And they hold a good amount of paint, and I keep hitting the camera with the brush. Um, so this is the color I was just saying. It's alizarin, umber, and black. And I think I'm going to add a little bit more black. Oh no, I kind of feel a sneeze coming on. I think it's going away though. Okay. So this is going to be a really fun one. Um, because the entirety of Mary's head... So she has dark brown hair in this painting. The entirety of her head is kind of coming out of these, this black background, um, which is really, it's emblematic of the style of the time, or like the, the style of the time. What am I trying to say? Uh, this is popular to do. Um, I'm now blanking on what the technique is called when you have a really dark black background and the people come out of it. Um, like Caravaggio does that a lot. Um, I think it's kind of like a 1600s kind of thing. I did not take art history. So I'm kind of sad I never took art history. So part of why this has been really fun to do master copies is I'm actually learning art history a bit, which is something that now fascinates me. But high school me was like, I'm too who for art history. I just want to paint. <laughs> um, but I really, I really love the backgrounds where it's dark and the, the portrait comes out. Though this whole, the enunciation is not this dark in the background of the entire in the entire painting, it's just this one section. And it is to add emphasis to Mary's face. Um, and that like the Holy Spirit's light is shining on her. Um, so her hair is super dark and to make it look more like her hair, I'm gonna add more of the umber and I'm gonna add a little bit of the burnt umber. And I'm a little bit regret, okay. I'm a little regretting not adding a new pool of paint. It's a little bit sticky. Um, well, that's warm. I'm going to leave it though, and then I can paint in some darker colors um, later on. I'm trying to remember what lines I was drawing. I'll do here. Yeah, it's kind of light. 
It looks very dark in the camera. That looks a little bit. You can see the brown. Um, I didn't add a bit more of the black. Right around okay, so her ear. Her ear is in shadow, but it's very chromatic. Lots of red in there. Which is going to be really fun to paint. Ears are so interesting because they do have a lot of red. Because the light is almost always shining through that thin skin. Um, there is something in this brush that is leaving little lines. Like a piece of paint that never got cleaned out and is now just scratching again. <laughs> It's fine. I'm not going to use this brush forever. Uh, I'm going to call that kind of good. This one I should have no problem finishing in one day, which is also kind of why I chose it for today. Um, there's a lot of more complicated ones going on, and so I'll probably end up having to stream two days to do get some of those. But this one, this one I'm just going to do. Um, look at the glow right around her face. It's very, it is, this painting does remind me a lot of Caravaggio. Um, he did the Call of St. Matthew and the, the inspiration of St. Matthew, which if you saw the paintings, you'd be like, oh, of course, that's, yeah, that's like the most amazing. You would know it, <laughs> most likely. Um, there Okay, I need to slow down a little bit because I'm starting to get paint where I don't want paint. Adding a bit more of the darker version of this and this edge of the veil comes up right next to very dark black. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of that there. Um, her neck ends here and that has darkness. Oh, hair. Mm, I think that's everywhere that there's really a lot of dark. Yeah. Because her hair is dark. Like there and there. But then there's lots of highlights that pop up. And this squiggly line that I drew was just, <laughs> just not actually on anything. It was just a... I guess remind myself that there is a uh, hair there. <laughs> Ooh. Okay. Um, I'm um, trying to decide if I want to go to a smaller brush or keep this brush. Because there's some darker parts in here. Which I think that's where the dark is. I'm just going to lay in a little bit of paint so that I have something to blend into when I do these uh, lighter bark. These, these gray colors. Um, and then I can add in, no, I'm going to get a new brush now and I'm going to do another filbert. Filberts are good to push paint around. Um, just kind of reshaping the brush. Um, I want to get this kind of auburn hair color, which I am going to do as burnt. Okay. Actually. Okay. No. We're getting rid of this burn number. It is too squishy. Overnight, so I put it in on that little piece of paper you saw at the beginning, and then I put it in a box and just limit the amount of oxygen, I guess, because oil paints oxidize. Now I can't find my... Where's my burn number? Did I actually lose my burn number? I couldn't find it yesterday either. It's a good thing I have another tube. <laughs> I definitely did not finish that tube though. 
How strange. Okay, well, that's a thing to remember to, to get tomorrow. Okay. This one's also with Rue Glove. Um, but so the reason also I didn't actually say why, I have the three different brands of oil paints. You can mix between the different brands and it's totally fine. Um, unless you're extremely concerned about the archivalness, like I was saying, and you want only oil paints that don't have anything but oil and pigment, then you would only want to have Rue Glove. But, you know, I, this, first off, these are like practices and, um, it's fine to mix, but you know, you spend money buying the oil paints, might as well just use them. So that's why I have three different brands. As time goes on, I'm going to just buy Rue Glove, I think. Um, their paints are also, they're so silky and smooth. Like this, you can't even tell. But the paints that come out of the, I have a Windsor and Newton, I think, of the Burnt Umber that I was using earlier. Or that's the tube I can't find. Um, and it's kind of chalky, kind of grainy, um, which was also the problem with the, every other uh, yellow ochre that I've ever used is very grainy. But Rublev's yellow ochre is just amazing. Absolutely amazing. Okay, I'm trying to figure out what color her hair is, and I'm struggling. I'm adding um, the ochres, I'm sorry, the umbers, yellow ochre, using this red and yellow ochre mix. This is like a not a bad highlight color, but it is, actually, it's not the worst. I'm going to add it a little bit on where the edges are between the shadows and the highlights of her hair. Um, and I'm not going to use it as the highlight around the edge of her face. So I think it needs to be a little bit more red. This is a, it's a little bit light. So it's a little bit light, so I want to add, I think I want to add the ochre and black mix to tone it down. More of the burnt umber. And then I think I want to add cadmium yellow to really punch up the yellow. Because the yellow ochre, okay, that was way too much. The yellow ochre is a little bit too orangey. It's a very similar color. Um, okay, that's... Don't want to put it down here. Uh, good morning, whoever just joined. Hello, hello. Welcome. I'm just painting... Philippe de Champagne's <laughs> The Annunciation, the detail of just the Blessed Virgin. Um, new brush, I think. It is time. I'm trying to figure out what color her hair is. Burn Umber, Cadmium Red. Let's make a little puddle of that. This is the color I really like that I probably should start using or making as part of the setup of my palette. It makes this lovely maroon color. And then if I add a little bit of the raw umber, what does that make? Mm, a little bit of the ochre. We'll use this pile that I actually... Oh, gosh, that was way too much. All right. I'm trying to make a dark color, and I just made a light color. <laughs> Again. Okay. Let's look at this. Well, that's nice and warm. She's like halfway to a redhead. It's very interesting. I love seeing the different um, takes that all these artists of the past um, take on, you know, sort of the nationality. Some they uh, like Mary's very blonde. Some she's very dark hair. And then of course with like the different apparitions, you have like Our Lady of Louvain and Our Lady of Cahip. Bo, if my dyslexia doesn't tell me wrong, I always, I mess up the letters a bit on that one. Um, but that's an African apparition. And then versus like Our Lady of Guadalupe. Um, but for whatever reason, Philippe said that a semi-redhead. I love it. Okay. 
painting very thinly and I'm not getting the darkness that I want out of the paint. I'm gonna add straight black, a little bit of the umber, sort of fill in these gaps. I think they just need to be dark and then I will blend them together and start getting little bits of the hair, like the actual strands of hair. brush again. Mm, the lighter brush. Okay, and then there's a really like bright highlight that I think I need to add white to. I haven't added any white to her hair yet at all. Um, I've been lightening with ochre mostly, but I will need to to put some white in eventually. I try to avoid adding white, uh, especially to shadow areas, because it helps keep the shadows in the shadow. Um, but also adding white, it it really changes the color. So if I have to mix and blend an edge together, having white on one side and something very close to black on the other is, it like messes your colors up. So I avoid white for as long as I can. Grabbing some dark. Working to make this edge really soft, all the edges soft, uh, between the hair, the background. It is almost time to switch to a round brush, I think. But I'm gonna use the filbert for a little bit longer. The filbert, once there's enough paint on the, on the canvas, the filbert leaves little crescent shapes that are <laughs> They're just annoying. Um, there's a little bit more black in here. A little bit in here. This like delicate white veil headpiece thing. <clears throat> I love it. It's such a pretty take on the mantle. The mantle is like when it has a like it's a thick piece of fabric, and then the veil. Actually, mantles are usually the one. You know, it goes like all the way down. It's like a cape with a hat. <laughs> no, it's just it's just like a long veil. I don't know what I'm saying anymore. <laughs> but a veil would be something um, thin that goes like shoulder length kind of thing. And usually she'll have two, both. Mary's usually depicted with both a man mantle and a veil. But in this one, she's not. Um, I'm just making white, uh, a little bit of the yellow white and a little bit of black. I like the yellow white a lot. Um, use, usually using straight white looks very, it's like it's too bright and too blue. Even this is a little bit too blue, but the, her, the, the veil is a more blue color. Not that bright though, that is so bright. Adding more black. you have any questions, feel free to throw it in the chat. Um, or if you're watching after the live, put it in a comment and I'll read the comments. And I'll answer them the next day. Also, while you're down there, check if you're subscribed. Always helps. And then if you hit the bell and the little notification button, um, not and, the bell is the notification button. <laughs> You'll get a notification when the stream goes live. Um, so you don't miss out. You don't have to be like sitting on Instagram and noticing when the live notification comes out. Um, yeah. Okay, this is not green enough. Um, 
a little bit more yellow. Oh yeah, that's better. I'm trying to place in the spots of the lightest color. Um, and I already did the darkest color. And then everything in between, I'm gonna um, semi-blend them together. But I'm trying to just establish where's the highlights, where are the shadows. And then I'll go in and finesse the shapes once there's more paint down. Cause I'm trying to do that while the paint is is not covering the canvas. It's really hard to keep a shape um, accurate, especially when you're gonna go in and add another shape close to it. At least I like always mess up the shape, so why even, why stress out at the beginning to get it right? And just go back. So like I put the, just, <laughs> as you saw, I just put the halo in and I got it all in the black, but now I can go and cut in with the black and make a really nice smooth transition. Except that this filbert is a little bit gigantic. Um, and it wants to fade to black right here. And I also should have done that a lot more yellow. Okay, this is what happens when I get distracted halfway through painting. This is not really supposed to be the same color as the veil. <laughs> Whoopsies. Whoopsies. Oh, well, okay. I'm going to actually grab a new brush. Get something that's much more... No, I'm gonna table the I'm gonna table the halo because I need that light a little bit as highlights everywhere else. But I wanna work the veil a bit more. So I'm gonna grab the veil brush again. And this actually, okay, this line that I just painted looks like it was painted on top when it was dry. Because it's a little bit sketchy, not blended. But today it shall be blended. Okay, so I'm gonna take that new brush and I'm gonna use, so there's already some lighter-ish browns in there. I think I'm gonna go with the black as my intermediate. <laughs> I'm gonna start calling it the glue. <laughs> the glue to bring the painting together. It's that color that you don't have down yet that you're gonna paint in and blend with everything else until everything looks correct. Okay. I will admit I'm a rather ADD painter surprisingly, but, <laughs> um, so I'll get some parts started and then I'll move on to other parts, um, and leave them half finished. So if that bothers you, <laughs> sorry, it's never going to change. Uh, I sometimes, I really admire artists that can just, you know, start in one little section and then just work it to completion, um, without, you know, leaving it halfway done like that, where they just, one color next to the other, add paint down. Um, and I guess in a way I'm working towards do being able to do that, but it's also extremely difficult. You really have to keep the whole painting in mind at the same time. But my big hang up on that is that my brush, if I put a pet color up on here and it ends up being a little bit wrong, um, I just, I'm like, okay, well, where's that color used elsewhere? Instead of going back to the palette and getting it right, I just, you know, I use it wherever it's needed. Um, and then I go back to the palette. Um... Or if I'm about to move on and I need to change colors, it's like, well, what else? Where else is this color used? So then I do that. Um, I think that's helpful to keep the brush management in check a little bit better. Um, so instead of trying to add a million colors to one brush, I'm just adding, I'm adding a color, and then if it works somewhere in the painting, I'm using it. And then I'll grab a new brush if I really need to change the color up. Okay, now I'm trying to find the actual shape of these highlights and giving and blending it in with the black, which I should start to move over there, um, so that I get these medium tones, but I'm using very dark color. I'm using the background color on the brush to achieve these transitions. 
So I'm not mixing the color I really want. I'm mixing the color that I know that when I put it on the canvas, it's gonna be the color I want as it touches the colors that are there and sort of mixes and blends a little bit there. Um, just it's what works. <laughs> There's a lot of things. So I'm a self-taught artist. Um, okay, I just realized her head actually goes out a lot farther. Hold on. The shadow of the of this thing is blocking it, but it goes out like this. Not like that at all, but a little bit like that. Um, so I'm self-taught. I didn't actually go to a school um, to learn art. My degree, when I went to college, was for theater management and the production sides of um, theater. Um, which has been really helpful in being a business. Actually, like, a lot. Um, but I didn't learn how to paint. Um... But recently I took a couple of workshops with artists that I really admire. Um, I just like found on Instagram. Uh, and their little tips and tricks have helped a lot to give confidence. So if you ever can take a class with an artist on Instagram, it might sound, sometimes it feels a little sketch because you're like, what? I'm just gonna be taught by this person? Yes. <laughs> it's very cool um, and super helpful. Um, but there's things that I, I paint the way that I paint partially because I taught myself. And fun facts, I actually learned from from time lapses a lot. I used to love watching time lapses as a kid. Um, and it really helped to see the overarching, you know, from beginning to end of a painting and sort of the, what the artist was doing in the middle to get to the end um, and trying to figure out and catching that, you know, and it's going super speed. Um, and catching it was really, it was kind of a fun, like, you know, game to play. Like, how do they, why do they start this way, and how did that work towards the end? Um, but as a result, I paint kind of, <laughs> kind of spasmatically. Um, like, I'm always moving my brush constantly, and I think it's because, I'm swatching to the, to the veil color, um, because I watch time lapses, and, you know, if you've seen my Instagram, when you watch a time lapse, it's very fast, and the brush never stops. Um, which has been a detriment, I think, for a while. Uh, it's, learning how to slow down has been a, a very helpful. It's fun little things. Like that, that's how I got here. And why I paint this way. Um, but, like, learning the way that painters paint properly, or, like, the, <laughs> the way that they, they teach in schools nowadays. Um... If you're taking, like, a master class, not, like, a, you know, what is it called? Abstract class? Like, they're not going to teach it this way. But you're supposed to do, like, tiling. Um, getting the right color, placing it down, and then putting the next color correctly next to it. It hurts my head. <laughs> um, yeah. I don't, know. I don't know where I was going with that, but that's just some fun facts. But then again, um, I used to hate painting wet into wet, where the paint's wet and I'm adding wet paint on top. It's very easy to go overboard and have too much paint on the canvas. But it's really good practice because you can get some beautiful transitions in when you learn how to control it. Um, I need I need an actual intermediate color, I think. I'm gonna grab a new brush and I'm gonna grab the hair color because I see some warmer tones peeking through the veil, which mirror the tones that, um, I'm just gonna, call, I can't call him De Champagne. I don't know, that sounds weird. Um, I'm just gonna call him Philippe. Yep. Philippe added a little bit of hair color in the veil because it's sheer. I feel like I got a little lost though. <laughs> Started talking and I don't know if I'm focusing enough on the actual veil. Um, okay, hold on. There's some parts that are not, don't have anything there. Like down here. 
which definitely did not want to be that color. Oopsies. And then here. shape needs to come down like that. Okay, I'm blending out all of the highlights because I'm going to go back in and add more highlights so I don't want to have too much of the highlight color left. I'm going to make everything sort of this medium color. Um, and then I'm going to redefine shapes here. This does have white. I didn't say that earlier, or maybe I did. But we have started to add white to the painting. Okay, and that doesn't really do that. This comes here and goes like that. And then since I have a little bit of this paint on my brush, I'm just gonna fill in this area. And after this, everywhere that I'm painting, currently, will have paint on it. And then I can start blending and doing the transitions. and making sure the shapes are accurate. Oopsies. Oh, okay. And yeah, my brush is like almost never stopped. Good morning, Noah. Thank you. <laughs> Distract away. I could, I, well, I like talking. <laughs> and if you guys have questions, I want to be able to answer them. Just talking to myself. Uh, I can get lonely, I guess. <laughs> Even though I do that sometimes anyway. It actually really helps to talk through why I'm painting and doing certain different things. Um, it like cements the concepts in the mind. Um, so ask away. Uh, don't feel pressured to though if you don't want to. If you don't have a question. But thank you. Noah. welcome to the stream. Uh, coming down here. And then I think I'm going to stop there. Even though this is kind of veil color. It's got... Well, I, hold on. Where does her shoulder end? It's like right there. And then her, this is, this is, this is supposed to be the, supposed to be the in-between color brush, but now it is simply the black brush. I'm going to embrace it. I need some more black there. These colors are a bit too vibrant. I could use being in between. Good morning. You're supposed to be paying attention. <laughs> I know she's teaching down there. <laughs> okay, coming back up. So, looking at it as a whole, looking in the camera, uh, the camera's right here, and comparing it, I think it needs more of the green blue. My veil's gone a bit brown blue, and it wants to be green blue. So I'm gonna grab the veil color. And do a little bit of black and a little bit more yellow. I'm not gonna add blue. Um, I was gonna add ultramarine, but then I decided that, that would, it's not gonna work. Uh, lighten it up with the yellow white. Thank you. <laughs> All right, going there. And 
And then looking back, trying to figure out where this point actually is. And I think I've done it a little too pointy. It needs to be less pointy. You left the meeting. <laughs> Was it over? <laughs> Now I've done added way too much white there. I'm feeling like my sh shapes are a little off. So I'm defining new edges and kind of um, uh, it's too too much white everywhere. This little bit comes out and goes around. Looking for the highlights and the shadows. <laughs> Better than you mean like in painting? It just takes practice. One of the kind of fun things about painting is that it is always better to get, like you can always get better. Um, and part of, like, the more you paint, the more you see how much you need to improve, you know? But never fear. It's always just practice. If you're a struggle, like, I used to hate, hate painting faces. I literally, when I started doing, um, Outpouring of Trust, I was like, I will never, you know, I'll take it as a, as an L. I'll never paint people. Like, I'll never do the Saints or Mary, and it'll be fine. I'll just be a sacred artist doing... Um, like the monstrances and the tabernacles, and that's really important. I mean, I like Jesus in the Eucharist, huge devotion to Jesus in the Eucharist. Um, so it made sense. And I always like painting architecture and sort of the still life things, but that was because that's what I practiced <laughs> a lot. And noticing, like painting now faces um, and doing more portraiture and figurative drawing and painting, um, it's just like a lack of practice. That's why um, I didn't like painting it. Um, so people always say, like, hands are so hard, and it's like, well, you practice doing hands. I do think hands are very hard still. <laughs> um, but it's all just practice. Putting the hours in. It's really rewarding, too, when you, like, look back at how you were before. Um, if you, like, do... I've done a couple where months where it's I challenge myself to paint every day. Um, especially, like, in October, I did the Saints every day. And that, like, after that, I was like, oh, I actually can, I, you know, huh, I can actually paint faces. <laughs> I can paint people because I practice it every day. Um, so if you're struggling in your art, just, you know, schedule the time and make it happen. People <laughs> go up to their eyebrows. Yes, that this transition here is very, it's, it's weird. Um, and I'll talk about it a bit when I get there. Once I'm happier with what this veil is doing. But the bridge of the nose and the transition to the eyebrows is a very difficult part of the face. Um, especially with the shadow. I always struggle with the shadow and then not over defining this side. Like here, you can. Huh, <laughs> black on my finger. Um, but on this one, like, there's almost no definition between the edge of her nose and the color of her cheek um but our brains say there must be a difference there because we know that it's two separate shapes um, so learning how to not over define it is that's when i like that's when you can get better 
<laughs> your profile picture? Maybe. Probably not, though. <laughs> I have a whole list of paintings that I have planned. The corgi, though. The corgi is pretty cute. Um, I'm adding a little bit more chromatic colors, uh, grabbing a little bit more of the yellow with the white um, to add little notes of highlight. Um, and to visually make it look, what am I trying to say? More colorful than it actually is. There's just gonna be notes of color instead of painting the whole thing with color. And that'll help make it um, yeah, appear more colorful. I don't know. I'm just, I said it and then I said it again in a slightly different way. Uh, I think this comes up a little bit farther. Sheer fabric is a challenge. <laughs> You're welcome. I think I've done an add too much white. I'm gonna go back to the, I'm gonna go to the black, black brush and then add some, you're not gonna be able to tell on the palette, but I'm gonna add some brown so that as it mixes with the white on the canvas, it'll, it'll go brown instead of this blue. And that'll help keep the veil much warmer. <laughs> and then painting the hair. Um, focus, focus, focus. Don't get distracted. <laughs> I see a need elsewhere in the painting and I just have to go fix it. I think I will take a pause from the veil up here, at least for the moment. Because um, it's starting to get too much paint. Um... Okay, hold on. There's a dark spot right there that comes down that I have, I, I got rid of. It goes like. It goes like that. Mm. And then I need a little bit more black. Because it needs to be more defined there with very dark. Thank you, Noah. <laughs> okay, and then I want the brown again. This does not do that. This does not do that. Okay, I'm gonna grab the light veil brush color again. I was kind of fixing the parts that I went over and pushing it to where I want it to go. Also, blending away most of the brush strokes so that everything is uh, smooth transitions and there's no buildup of a really dark color where I don't want it to be. Okay, 
white, or not white, <laughs> the opposite of white, black. This shape doesn't look quite right. Um, I keep looking at the camera in the small version of it, because it's kind of the same as either stepping back or squinting, um, or taking a photo. Uh, really helpful if you like don't know what's wrong with your painting or your drawing or whatever to take a photo of it and then look at it you know the small square of it of a photo um it's like stepping really far back but you don't have to squint <laughs> and therefore you can see things a little bit better technology <laughs> um but even though it's like small and i'm standing back here you're looking at the phone uh, is really helpful to see where shapes have gone awry. Like here, this doesn't go up high enough. Except the only problem is that the light glares onto the phone and it doesn't glare when I'm looking at it. It's a bit annoying. Okay. Um, okay, I'm gonna move on to here. And then that, I might go back before the end of the day um, and do a little bit more up there. Because the oil paint will start to cure and tacky up, even in the time that I'm going to paint the rest of the face. So like in three or four hours. Maybe not, maybe not four. But all like two hours, it'll be tacky enough to do a little bit more finessing without the paint just slooshing around as it does um, when you get a lot on the palette. I mean the canvas. Words, words, come on, words. That, I did not put that, oh no I did. It's not this line that's wrong, it's this line that's wrong. How long have I been painting? Uh, the stream has been up for I mean, for today or for in, in my life? But we are at about an hour on this painting. Um, for my life, I am 25. And I've been painting since childhood. No, um, actually painting since like grade school. Uh, art was always my favorite class. Um, and then I picked up oil painting in high school my senior year. Uh, cause I've always wanted to try it. And then when I picked it up, I absolutely, I just fell in love with it immediately. Um, and then I didn't paint very much in college. Um, but I did like in the summer, if I could, I would do a painting. I just didn't have time that my schooling was, uh, there was just so much work. I didn't have any time to do anything fun. Um, and Wow, train of thought just left. And then I started outpouring of trust, like, right out of college. Um, and started actually sitting down and practicing a lot more. But, yeah. Okay, working on the hair now. I didn't really do much here. Hold on, I'm gonna grab the white. And sort of fix... I cut into the white and now I need to redefine the white edges a little bit more. And then push that out a little bit, I think. And then this needs to go over and then there's some in between. A little bit of a transition there. Working on the hair. I'm finding the dark shapes first. My YouTube channel? This is my YouTube channel. Um, outpouring of trust. I just started last Friday. It's 
Speaking of which, for anyone else watching, it is a super new channel, so you're probably not subscribed. Just saying. Okay. Um, I need a new brush. You know, highlights on her hair are very similar to the veil, but I think they're much more yellow. So I'm gonna grab some of this yellow, add a little bit more yellow, and then tone it down with some of the ochre red and see what that looks like. This is gonna be so bright. Yeah, okay, that's kind of too bright. Um, that is too bright. Uh, and I'm mixing it in with the veil color, because that currently is a little bit darker. I'm gonna add a little bit of the ochre and black. No, I don't want that. I don't want that at all. I want cad red. It needs to be warmer. And I'm gonna add a little bit of the burnt umber. Okay, and then that's trying to pair like that. Possibly, I might move it. I uh, need to start getting the blend with the hair to the face because it's really thin there and so it changes color. Um, This color, is this a good color for here? Yeah, it's not bad. Gonna empty my brush over there. Also, I don't know what I was doing here. What, did, what, what are you doing? Um, that's a good color. Try to keep the brushes organized so that there's each brush has its color that it will be, uh, and then not adding in other colors to keep it pure. And then also so that all colors, all the brushes don't just become mucky brown. So by the end of the day, I will have a whole fistful of brushes. get all of the hair done and then I can move on to her face and I think I'll do the like little bit of the dress that you can see last I'm just adding a little bit more paint down here because there's not enough oh as I <laughs> just saying about brush management I just totally changed the color of this brush it is now brown Um, I don't know what's going on here. Maybe I do need to put some blue in. I don't, I don't really know what's going on down here. I can't see it, for lack of a better term, because the colors around it are just not there yet. So I'm going to move on from that. And go up here. Grab a lighter brown color. Add in this wispy. This wispy. That's gonna be too dark, but uh, I once again need the face color to get it right. So I'm not gonna worry about it. And then blending these edges of this, these brush strokes so that it's really smooth looking. And not like I just threw a really bright highlight on top of a darker color. 
So even though there are like streaks in her hair, they aren't. The brush strokes are not super visible, like you would see in like a Monet or a Van Gogh. All of them have been softened by the colors around them. Okay, and then up here, there's a little bit of a graying, which might be the scan, but I'll, I'm, I'm embracing it. There's starting to be a little bit too much paint here. Okay, let's move on to the face. Okay, well, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Scoot that back into frame. Um, there's a dark line here. And it creates different curls of hair. I need to get that song out of the playlist. Leave me like that, new brush. What size brush do I want? I'm gonna use a filbert again. And I'm gonna find, okay, so there's multiple colors here. These are much more browny, and these are much blue, much more blue. Even though it's all kind of the same value of the shadow. There's a lot of blue right on the outside of her eyes, but the eyes themselves are, have a lot of red, red on the cheeks, and then the bounced light of her, the red of the dress on the chin. So there's a lot of different colors to find. But that's kind of the basis of it. Um, I'm gonna start with the ochre and black. And this is where, these are the flesh tone colors that I'll be using for the highlights more. But until then, I'm gonna try not to add any white until absolutely necessary into the shadows. Um, again, because it keeps the shadows dark. It keeps the shadows receding. Um, particularly with oil paints, that's important. Um, but I can lighten with ochre, which will keep it... Ochre's kind of... I mean, it's an orangey color, and our skin tone is, you know, orangey, pinky. Um, this feels... Okay, putting a little test down. That is perhaps good for right here. Mm, it's a bit green. This shadow comes up here. Shadow there. Okay, it needs to be more burnt number. That's kind of good for right here for the top of the cheek. Oh, that was too thin. <laughs> I didn't get any paint off that. Um, I'm going to grab a little bit of this Burnt Umber Red mix. Bring it over. And that'll be good for this transition. Will it be good? I think it needs a little bit more cad red. The transition between a shadow shape and the highlight of the face is usually very chromatic, very highly saturated. So same thing's happening right here. Um, so I want a round. And I'm gonna do it as a little bit more cadmium red. I will probably end up redefining this again. But now is not a bad time to put a little bit in. Um, 
back to the other brush. This is when the painting looks real fun. <laughs> it starts to look very just all over the place as I place different colors down. Um, but then it all comes together. The goal right now is to get the entire um, face area having a little bit of color everywhere so that there's a little bit of paint everywhere, and then I'll go in and, um, I'm gonna brushes. Um, no, I'm not. And I'll smooth them all together and then work out the exact shapes that I'm trying to find. Um, new brush, I'm gonna start off with this ochre black again. Um, get some umber, more ochre black. I'm running out of room. Um, it's still very green. I'm gonna add some straight black with the ochre. I mean, I'm sorry, that was the umber that I just mixed it with. Yeah, that's a good color for there. And that'll probably be a good color for up here. And right in here. So that's a shape that I didn't really draw, but the eye goes in the socket, like pinches into the nose and creates a, a concave shape, which holds a shadow when the light is coming from the other direction. It's a bit too much right there. Um, a little bit more black, a little bit more of the umber just to lighten it back up a tiny bit, and then a little bit of the ochre, because I'm trying to get this darker shape back here. I stream every morning from 9 to noon. That at least is the plan <laughs> for this week. Um, but probably for the future as well. It depends on how many other projects I'm going to do that I can't stream. Um, for instance, I have a still life painting that I'm working on. Um, and that one's just, I can't, like, it, mm, the angle, I, I can't get the angle right. And the painting is bigger. But as long as I'm doing these little master copies and I have some same paintings that I want to do, those will be streamed. And I have enough paintings that I can get the week done and possibly next week. Okay, that was way too much black. I don't know why I just did that. Um, but it's a little bit good for over here. Yeah, that was too much black. I'm gonna add some ochre. That was not ochre, that was umber. This is ochre. And adding it on top is gonna lighten it back up. And I'm gonna add a little bit of burnt umber because I see it going just a little bit more brown down here as it, again, reflects the dress. What painting? Okay, what paintings? What time of the day? Wait, what time, what day? I said that, okay. Um, nine to noon, <laughs> every day of the week. Um, I have a whole stack of paintings and I kinda, like last night I sat down and I just scrolled through the entire stack um, and was like, this one, I want to do this one today. So more paintings, um, more master copies. It's kind of what it's called, um, a la prima studies. So paintings that are over a hundred years past the death of the, uh, painter, mostly from the Renaissance. Um, almost all of them are of Mary because I have a Marian series that I'm prepping for. Um, so I'm kind of studying what, what did people do in the past, as well as also learning how to actually paint faces. Um, so I don't know what I'll do tomorrow. We'll see. Um, 
Okay. I really need this gray color. Actually, this color comes down a little bit farther here. And we'll blend. Uh, I have a warm brown. Oh, oh, don't hit the brushes. A warm brown that I want to use for the nose. That's darker. It's not super dark. It needs to be darker. Add some umber to that. It's like umber and cadmium. On the dot at nine? <laughs> That's the goal. <laughs> I think I did today. I think I was pretty, like, very close to actually nine o'clock in the morning. Um, oopsies. Yeah, as close to nine as I can. Before I stream, I do a little bit of like businessy stuff so answer emails and whatnot so potentially if there's an email that it's that i have to answer it'll be a little bit later but pretty much nine because then that gives me plenty of time to work oh i just added a lizard i do not want to add a lizard i was trying to add burnt number um then the train of thought has been derailed oh because then i have plenty of time before noon um because noon is kind of when i have to stop Uh, this is cad red and burnt number. And it also works pretty good right down here. As a start on the dress. And then this is kind of a lighter color. I'm going to add a bit more pink and start adding some... That needs a little bit more of the yellow. But starting to add some of the the light parts. Oopsies, that, I just misplaced the brush stroke right there. I'll see you tomorrow then too, Noah. This probably wants to be a little bit more yellow. Adding the highest notes of pink um, that I'm seeing. Um, Philippe <laughs> did a lot of warmth right in the creases on the eye. So I'm making that. brush this is my favorite part of the painting <laughs> when it starts to look really really weird uh that's probably too much pink but i do want it to go a little bit lighter right there that's gonna be too much paint I'm trying to smush it around and get a little bit more spread out so it's not so thick pink there um, it's kind of pink on the eyelid. And there. And there. Okay, I think it needs a new brush. Um... I think he did a lot of black in the skin tone, which is kind of weird. 
Usually you don't see a lot of black in the skin tone, but I'm going to add some up here to the peach, or the pink color, not the peachy pink color. Um, make it sort of into a purple. And I'm going to grab a little bit of the peachy pink. So that's kind of red and yellow, plus black, plus white. This is probably not going to be right. Oh, that's okay. That's the, oh, oh, that's actually pretty good. So there, this is going to be the highlight. So anywhere that's really light, I'm going to lay this color in as a starting position. And as you can see now, um, even adding just these, oh, excuse me, there's different highlight colors. Um, since the back of the canvas is, or the canvas is primed with sort of an umbery color, um, it doesn't look quite right. But I do believe that it is a pretty close match. Um, but that's why I'm not going to blend the colors next to it yet. I'm going to try to lay in as many colors as I can and cover the whole area. And then I can see uh, what needs to shift and change. That actually is probably even a little bit darker. I'm going to grab some umber into the mix, a little bit more black. Oh, that's really dark, so I'm going to add more of the darker peachy pink and pinks. A little bit more. This is like one shade darker. Instead of shading with a brown, it looks like he shades more with black. Which is very different from the car not, not the Carpaccio, the um Bellini that I did yesterday. Bellini shades with warm colors. Um, but this does make sense. It's the Annunciation, so the Angel Gabriel's off to the side where she's looking. Um, and the light from heaven is coming in and it's a very cool, a cool light instead of a warm candlelight kind of look. That is not, that is not even blue enough. I'm going to add more of the black. Is that it? Oh, that's closer. A little bit of the umber, a little bit more of the black. I think it needs a little bit of cad yellow. Um, I've gone a little too far away from like the, I don't know, a green. Looks like you have a little bit more green in there. Trying to get the colors as accurate as possible, but it also doesn't matter. I don't, I don't want to say it doesn't matter because it does, but getting them close enough and covering the canvas is more important than agonizing over if this exact color is the perfect color for this area. Because so I won't be able to tell, so everything's in. That is very yellowy. He did do that yellow concept that I was talking about on the forehead. Okay, that one wants to be a bit more purple, so grabbing some more of the pink into this mix. That went too light, so it needs a bit black. I think I want to swap back to the shadow brush and work some of the shadow shapes. Oh, wait, no, I want to do a bit more down here. But I kind of play back and forth between the shadows and the highlights, um, bouncing around until I have a full idea of what 
colors are in the area. Then I would approach a, a photo the same way. Um, it's just helpful with the master copies that um, Philippe de Champagne did, like, you know, he chose the colors. He saw that the lighting was this cooler color and he painted appropriately from there. <laughs> looks so funny now. Oh, I love this stage of the painting. <laughs> this is the stage that's the scariest. Trust the process. All right, I'm going to swap back to... Oh, I don't have a brown skin tone round brush. Grab a new brush. Um, this underneath her jaw area... It has a warmth. So I'm going to plop that in. That is also a very similar color, plus perhaps a little bit of yellow. As up here. Um, adding a bit more of the brown, not the brown, the black. I don't see that was too much. Do, do, do. Okay, that's the eyebrow and I need to, okay, I'm gonna grab a new brush, actually do brown this time, and get any of the eyebrow colors, all the browns, the darker brown areas, I'm gonna put some paint in there. Um, a little bit of burnt umber, raw umber, and a little bit of the cad red ochre mix. Yellow is also a really good color to use as a as a lightener, but it, it tends to be a bit, you know, yellow. <laughs> mm -hmm. I wanted to get the eyebrow in. Okay, that is definitely more of an umber and black color. I'm going to take a little bit of that, and that has a little bit of a lizard in, a lizard crimson in it. Um, okay, that's going to be too dark. But that's okay. And then I'm going to lay in a little bit of the eye. The eye has a lot of these really vibrant cad red colors in it, in the dark spots instead of like this dark, dark black. So I'm going to avoid those spots for now. And then this one's a little bit on the nose, and then it wants to go on the lips. Actually, it doesn't want to go on the lips. Usually it does want to go on the lips. I'm just going to put some right there. Um, I'm going to add some more of the umber and the, well, the two umbers. And push it into the ochre colors. Make a nice brown for the eye. Mm, that's not brown enough. I'm going to add a little bit of ochre and cad red. We're looking for that nice warm brown eye color. And then adding cad red. No, not adding cad red. Brushing that out. Where else does it need this color? This warm color comes in here, comes in here. Even the white of the eye is this warm brown. And then the crease is brown. Merging into these really warm little, little notes of warmth. Uh, this is toned down enough that it's closer to the eyebrow color, so I'll lay that in. Some down here, right on the edge. So that's the edge. I need to. Okay, it goes back here. I'm gonna ignore the ear for now because the ear has a lot of cad red in it. 
Okay, that, that, that was too big of a transition. Alright, what is this in-between color here? I'm gonna go back to the other, that bluer brush that I was using down there, and I'm gonna add some umber just into it, and that'll make it a little bit warmer, and add a little bit of the raw burnt umber to make it even warmer. See how I feel about that. That's not a bad intermediate color. Well, it's gonna be too warm. I mean, too blue. But it's not the worst. I'm gonna lay it in in a lot more areas. A little bit on the eyeball. Over there, and then definitely grabbing a little bit of that warm color brown and putting that some of that there, bringing it back to this intermediate mix that was on the brush originally. At this stage, I do tend to lose a little bit what I was planning for the intermediate color, so I just fill it in a little bit. Uh, and then I will go back in with a soft, clean brush and blend it so that there's none none of the canvas comes through. I need to figure out what this light color is. A little bit of darkness down there. Where else is there darkness that I'm missing? Some up here as her forehead turns. And here, I need to figure out this light color as well. This is probably too light. Just gonna blend it in with the darker color. Blend in here. This right, there's almost no paint on my brush whenever I go back up. Um, I'm partially dropping any paint that is on the brush and moving the paint around that's already there. That way it keeps it really thin, um, so that as I do more touch-ups, I'm not glopping a ton of paint on. I'm keeping it relatively thin. Oh, that was too dark. Okay, well, <laughs> no problems, no problems. They're happy trees. Okay, that's white. I don't mind this color at all. as the highlight color. Just needs a little bit of yellow for the forehead. Ooh, that's not where I was mixing, I was mixing it down here. Oh, okay, that didn't really wanna go there. Grab some more there. Put a little bit of whatever that dark color is. I think it does need to be a bit more peach or pink. Does she look scary yet? <laughs> I'll end you time. Just trying to cover the whole canvas with a thin layer of paint. Oh my gosh, it's so scary. Oh. To be fair, actually, like this coloring of the skin is very weird. Um, and Philippe did a strange choice, but it works, right? Especially in the painting as a whole. Um, but if you were to eyedrop or some of these colors, they are very blue. Okay, I think that's good for now. I'm gonna take a filbert. Actually, probably isn't enough paint, but. I'm kind of tired of looking at it. So I'm just gonna start patting in, this brush has no paint on it. I'm just patting and moving 
all the paint around and filling in all of the little crevices of where the weave of the linen is. Um, and starting with the highlights, and I'll work just the highlights, and then I'll come back and I'll work just the shadows so that I'm not getting too much um, paint around. And when this gets too much paint, I'm gonna wipe it off. But right now it's still pretty good. Um, I didn't really do her lips, but that's okay. I'm also, I'm still looking over at the reference and adjusting shapes. If I think they need adjustments, like that chin was done very wrong the first time around. Um, Adding in a little bit there. Adding in there. Smoothing this out. Smoothing that out. Just massaging all of the paint around. Especially here. So I plopped down very vibrant colors next to each other, and now I'm gonna create those transitionary tones. I mean, a little, only a little bit. I'm gonna have to go back in and do much more. Um, just kind of smoothing that out. This edge is starting to go all over the place. Okay, I'm gonna wipe the brush. Actually, I'm just gonna get a new brush to do the shadows. And then I can have a shadow brush and a highlight brush. Mm -hmm. I need to put a little bit more in that ear just to make it recede enough to not be super distracting. And got a little bit too much of this lighter color on my brush, but okay, her I lost that shadow. And I'm gonna push a little bit more of it back in. This shadow. Pushing up this highlight color a bit more so it's not so um, contrasted. Okay. And then the nose. shadow hmm. um okay ear ear time 
the whoo almost got paint on that um ear okay so i need some cad red some burnt umber a little cad red oh, quite a bit more cad red um This is not a bad color to start putting in here. It's a bit too light for the ear. These little crevices. And then it's not a bad lip color to just put a color down. And this one, the lips are very vibrant and some of them, um, like Bellini emphasizes the highlights that come on lips, so they're very light colored. This one is very pink, just interesting. One of the cool things. Um, it needs to be darker. Okay, so I need some black, or whatever this dark is. It's umber and umber and black. Yeah, that makes it recede a bit more. Okay, but not enough. Oh, I didn't realize it was that dark. All right, <laughs> that's okay. Okay, this ear, this ear. We do the ear, then we do the eyes. Um, there's a black strand of hair. I'm gonna go around the edge and blend the edge. Then I'm gonna go in with some umbery colors. And get that. And that. Um, more umbery colors because the brush is now too much of the pink. There's too much paint down there. It just needs to recede. Uh, now that's too late there. This is a good color though to pop a little bit more contrast here and here. <laughs> there is a black strand of hair that I keep covering up. I was like that. Okay, I think I lost the shape. Um... This needs to be much smoother. Uh, grab a little bit more cad red. And add some notes of wool, very vibrant warmth. Okay, the shape of the ear is, has been lost. So what is the shape of the ear want to be? Let's go a bit more out there. Adding a bit more cad red on that edge and up here and here. And then blending the 
this transition to the black. Fixing that shape a little bit. Oh, I made it too light though. Um, no, this is the dark brush. Grab some black. And then I think I'm going to transition to doing the eyes next. Now is where, when I really start looking for these small shapes and the small transitions. Before was just, what does that giant shadow shape look like? Whereas it's edges, what is its color most likely like? Defining the nose just a little bit. Because I'm easily distractible. <laughs> that edge. This edge. A little bit here. Okay, this edge of her face. Okay, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I'm gonna go into the black. Okay, I just realized this palette is very off because I keep moving my legs around. Um, yeah, I got a little unruly. Okay, I need a new brush. Oh my gosh. Push the glasses up with the finger, not with the brush. Um, I have a lot of white in this black because I keep using a lighter brush to pull up some more black. But mm, I'm going to grab a little bit of white here. Create a nice blue and white. Black and white, which looks blue. Mix as the color that goes here on the eyeball. And then slowly transition out to a lighter color. That side of is actually very white. Got a little bit more white. And then I'm gonna grab a little bit of pure white. Just put there, and there, a little bit of highlight there. A little bit of highlight there, and up here. I'm gonna really quick do a bathroom break though. Yes, yes, I will be back in about one minute. Okay. <laughs> I leave you with that.
doing okay. It's not the spaceship. All right, I'm back. Squishy, 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 squishy. And delicately place the cord out of paint way. Okay. And now my brushes are all out of order. Taking the peachy pink brush. There's still some parts where there's no paint on the canvas. So I'm partially trying to work those um, and put the right color in that spot. And then some of these, the peachy pink color that I put down originally is a bit too chromatic, needs to be lighter. That was too light. It wants a sort of in-between color that's on the forehead. transitions a little bit and then this is actually a darker than that and I'm gonna have to go back in but for now I can blend out the color that was there it's a bit too light and same thing over here actually some darkness around the eye but I'm gonna keep using this brush grab a little bit more white Right there. This part of the face right here usually faces the light source the most directly, so you get a really nice bounce. Um, really, like the highlight of the face is usually right between the nose and the eye instead of the top of the nose. The top of the nose is also very uh, light as well, but right here. At this point, I'm now trying to really get the shapes correct completely and to make sure all the brush strokes smoothly transition into the next brush strokes. Unless there's a real need to not have them do that. Also, I just realized that this her eye does something totally different. Just gonna add a little bit more white in those areas and then I swap to a brown brush. And grab some of this warm brown, which is burnt umber and cad red. Okay, I'm going over where her eyelash goes better get that shape. This is a little bit darker. I think it's overall darker, so I'm going to grab more cad red and burnt umber. A little bit of raw umber in there too. Wait. Gotta round out the brush. This is a nice point. The eyelash is really casting a huge shadow on the eyeball. And then that shadow continues. And the top of the, the bottom eyelid, the top of it is facing the light source and is really light. But the bottom creates this really abrupt cast shadow.
that when done correctly does not make the person look like they are exhausted, <laughs> but actually just looks like an eye. It's really interesting that the difference between looking like you have bags under the eyes and looking normal is actually a very, it's a very subtle transition. One that I don't always get right. At least not off the start. Whenever I go back down to the palette right now, I'm just getting this more of the same color. There's also a double. Um, I love this. Okay, so this is a, a painting from the 1600s. I think it was 1644 was when it was done. This time period, they really started to notice. Okay, I just did that wrong. That, for instance, on an eye, there you can see both creases. When the eye is open, it goes back and it's not just the one crease, there's a secondary crease in there. Because um, there's extra skin. And it's just like this little bit added level of realism that really pushes um, pushes it in. Okay, this needs to go darker. And come up and go darker there. And adding in all of these different folds and creases of the eye is what makes the painting look more accurate and realistic. Um, in the beginning, I remember I was really tempted to just ignore and simplify sort of the shape. But there's some shapes that our, our brain says must be there, even if we don't consciously notice that they are there. And part of learning how to paint is teaching our brains to notice those things. And then memorizing that they're there and applying it again. Okay, we're still kind of off on the shape and this is too light. And that, I think the eyebrow goes up a little bit higher. Coming a little bit more of this color. Blending. We have to go back into our, the iris a second. Okay, and then there's a little slight darkening right here. And then coming down. And then this comes in a little bit farther. I need a little bit of a darker color because this crease does hit a pretty deep note. And then, do I have a better brush for this? A little bit. This one's okay. I need a more pure brown. That doesn't have as much white. I'm starting to get too much white on that brush. Um, I want to use that here. And then maybe even come up here and grab some of the alizarin black umber combo. And use that to redefine this shape a little bit. The eyelash. And then for sure, the iris itself, or the pupil. And it comes out quite far into the brown as that clear orb of the eyeball, like over the eyeball, the lens, I guess it is, um, distorts the shape of the pupil. It looks like it goes like a very strangely shaped there. And then there's a slight darkening of the brown right on the edge. And that shape is a little off as well. Okay, I need, I'm gonna go 
with straight black. I'm gonna add that really nice shininess of the eye. Probably not right now until I look at this for a little bit longer and make sure that I like the shape. But I can go ahead and use this black over here. Okay, um, so I'll back to the medium brown brush that I was using, grab some more. I think I do want a little bit more cad red. This red comes up a little bit further. If you're just joining the stream, I don't know how long people have been here for. Um, or if you just jumped around in the VOD. Uh, <laughs> this is Philippe de Champagne's uh, The Annunciation. A little detail of it, of just Mary. Um, and if you have any questions, want to say hi, throw it in the chat. Throw it in the comments if you're watching the VOD. And I will read them through and answer them in the next stream. Which will be tomorrow. It's nine in the morning. Central time, central time. But right now I'm just redefining the eyes. I find, so after I do all of the massaging of the colors, once I get the whole canvas done, sort of have the value structure of the face in. I always like doing the eyes first. It really helps draw the piece in. And in all of these ones at least, well I guess in any painting really, the eye is the focal point of the face. Um, so getting those really accurate is really helpful. Um, and it's, you know, it's because we as humans, when we look at each other, we're usually looking each other in the eyes. Um, especially yeah, just to, to see, to gauge emotion, to gauge um, interest. We look at the eyes a lot. So if there's any part of the face that you want to get really good at, it's probably the eyes. <laughs> um, which is also kind of complicated. a lot of tiny folds going on. That is too overdefined up there. And I think there's more white on that side. Let me take the white brush back out. The whites of the eye brush. Um, actually, and I'm gonna grab a little bit more of the black on here. Because it comes out a little bit farther. I have it fading too much to white. And then I would say it even comes into the iris, and the iris I painted too big. Uh, maybe that's a bit too far. Um, but then I want to add a little bit of this peachy pink color back in and do this under part of the eye before I move back on and fix the iris. So I have a little bit more to blend into for this bottom of the eye area. And then there's more transitioning going on in that the socket of the eye in the top that I haven't put in yet. But it's just slightly different. Do, 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 do. 
Come back. Um, I want a the medium brush for that. I'm gonna take the red brush out, I think. And I want that sort of the warm brown. It's a little bit dark. I'm gonna add some more white. Which I guess I could have added right there. That's the same color. Um, and to make this less of an abrupt contrast and keeping it very warm. And then grabbing a bit of the red. I messed up that tear duct a little bit. <laughs> and then, not there, not there, not there. There's a slight turning of the under eye that keeps it separate from this little last bit of the face. And then there's the under eye. I, what is that called? I just forgot what they're called. Eyelid, eyelid. <laughs> Strange word to forget. <laughs> and then this is the right color. I'm gonna put that there. I'm gonna grab the black. And once again, pull that down because I keep messing up the corner. Um, oh well. Um, I'm gonna leave that there until I get down there with the rest. When I start working on the skin tone down there. some of this in between color and there and then I'm gonna do a little bit on the forehead give the eyes a rest and then I'll come back in a minute oh gosh getting some of the dark color So the forehead's very much like a sphere. Um, and currently I had it painted as more of a flat shape. So it needs to turn around, turn over the edge of her face. I need to blend it in with the edge of the hair. I, uh, I kinda, I need to redefine that a little bit, but that's, I'll do that in a second. Mm -hmm. um, let's go darker there. I'm gonna grab. Hmm. I think I want a new brush. Cause this is for the inner eyelid. This is for the pinks. Okay, I need a new brush. Brush management. All day long. Uh, I'm grabbing whatever that shadow color was that it got overtaken by the white, and I'm gonna redefine that shape. That is coming in too far over. This transition is way too abrupt. I'm gonna grab that white color back. 
That is not that white color. What, what is on this brush? I'm just gonna grab some more of the blue white and start blending those two together. And this is a, nope. I was gonna say it's an okay color to bring down there, but I had just touched the really dark brown of the hair. I'm gonna blend that back out. And I'm not gonna try to smooth that edge yet. I'm gonna leave that to when I have straight cadmium red almost on my brush. Um, but that needs to be more of a purple. So I'm gonna add some of the, the pink That is almost, that is too abrupt, or not abrupt, that is too dark. Because um, the light is coming from this direction, so the difference between this cheek and the nose is is very subtle, I'm seeing. It has a very harsh transition as it turns that edge, but this edge is very undefined. A little bit of light and lining up the eye ball again. Now that I haven't looked at the, um, the iris for a few minutes, I'm ready to pop back in. <clears throat> I just coughed in the direction of my instead of the other direction. Oopsies, sorry. Okay, so it goes darker right on the bottom. Come on. Gotta pick up enough paint to actually make a difference. These are too sharp. There's a little bit of a, a softer transition. It's not super clear cut, even though um, we know that the brown of the eye and the white of the eye are very distinct colors. Uh, it's much more of a delicate transition. I'm just barely, barely touching the painting. I'm gonna add a bit more of the redder color. As an in-between color to make that transition go a little bit smoother. But mostly I'm mixing the colors on there and I just messed up that edge a little bit. Pop in a little bit more dark in here while I have the color on the brush. Okay, this under eyelid, it is too much of a transition and I think it needs to have a little bit more chroma. So I'm gonna load up the brush with a more chromatic color of the skin tone. So that's ochre and cad red with this burnt umber and white. That actually is probably way too much, but there is a little bit of that right here. And then I'm gonna get a little bit of the lighter side so add just a little bit of the peachy pink. And then I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna smooth this out so it's not so contrasted. It also need, does need to go dark on that side as it turns around the ball of the eye socket. Um, how do I feel about 
about this side. This side's a bit light here too. And then that line is a little bit too defined as well. So smoothing out both sides of that edge, making a nice smooth transition. This is a little bit darker overall up here. Okay, I'm gonna grab a brush that I can use as a white. Actually, I'm just gonna use the iris brush, or I'm sorry, the pupil of the eye, the white of the eye. How many different parts of the eye can I say before I get to the right word? Oh my goodness. Okay, and I'm gonna load it up with almost pure white, but it's not gonna be pure white. Um, before I do that, I'm gonna go to the black brush because I just realized that the right eyes uh, people I didn't fix. It goes a little bit lower. It's slightly different shaped. And this part of the brown is a little bit darker as it is shadowed by the upper eyelid. And this side's darker. It's not a smooth brown, it's got transitions in it. And then a little bit more also on this side. And all of these shapes, I'm about to put the highlight on. And once I put the highlight on, it's going to be really annoying to change it. So I want to make sure I like it as close to 100% as I can. But then adding that highlight is going to totally transform the face and it's going to be really satisfying. All right, highlight time. There is a giant hair. All right. It goes right here. That is too white. So I'm just gonna tap it a little bit so that it blends with the black of the eye and transforms a little bit. And then getting this one on right about there. I've just defined pretty much the highlight of the face since those highlights are very, very light. So I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna add a little bit more white here and just a tad there and here. And this is too much of a transition. So I'm just gonna add a tiny bit in here to lighten that. So we have the feeling of the transition rather than the visible change. And then this is also very light. And then on the nose, there's another light spot, but I'm not really ready for the nose's light spot yet. And then there's a highlight on the forehead as well. I have a little bit more white. I'm just gonna pat it in. So the reference photo I took off so the Met, okay, this is this painting is at the Met, uh, the Metropolitan Museum of Art. Right. <laughs> um, anyway, so the Met has scanned um, pretty much all of the paintings that they have on display. And they're available for viewing and download and all of that on their website. And they have really, really, really high resolution scans. So a lot of the paintings that I'm going to be painting from, a good number of them I found on the Met's website. Um, but even so, like, I zoomed in a lot on this painting, um, because it's a, it's a gigantic painting, and there's a whole, like, Mary's full body is in there, there's a whole angel on the side, there's a Holy Spirit, there's, like, four feet of space between Mary and the angel. <laughs> um, but, um, so when I zoomed in, it is kind of pixelated-y, and I'm kind of noticing that I'm mimicking the pixels, the pixelation, rather than making it super smooth. But also... Um, it makes it more painterly and brushstrokey than I think the original really is. But I'm adding it in anyway. Um, it's a little bit more of my style, my handiwork. Does leave some brushstrokes in. I'm not a perfectly smooth painter. Um, so I think it works. But it is a little bit pixely. Okay, that has a lot. This, these both have a lot more blue and shadow. 
um, in the socket of the eye. And I'm going to move down to the cheek a little bit, I think. Since that's a good beginning color. Okay, and then I do want to, I'm going to do that blue. I need a new brush for that. So that brush, that blue, we'll pull some brown, black. Pull some black and white. That's going to be very, very wrong. <laughs> I'm going to add some yellow to that. Um, that's going to just be just ridiculously blue. But adding a little yellow will transition into the red. Okay, how does that look? Oh yeah, that's perfect. Might be even a little bit too light. So I won't use too much of it. I'm gonna add a little bit more of the black in. It needs just a tiny bit back here. And I need to transition, transition here. Okay, this little area right there is bothering me, but I don't have the right color on my brush to fix it. So I'll just let it keep bothering. <laughs> Um, and then there's like a line of blue down here, and then here, and then here. There, and then here, and then here, and that's much darker. I'm going to grab the brown brush and define the shape. That's much, much darker. Here, and there, and then I wanted to make this turn and go darker, and then come out a little bit more there, get rid of that harsh line, and this harsh line, and smoothly go into this under shape of shadow, and now we go back here. And then added some white, which tempers the amount of, that was, it was a lot of darkness that I had on there. Um, and now I need a bit of more of a lighter color. This, the nose, okay, I drew the nose very straight right now. Hold on, I just looked at the eye again. Okay, I'm gonna do that in a minute. I just noticed something about this eye that needs to change. Um, but, I need some brown on this for right here. And the nose, is not this straight of a line. If we were doing iconography, maybe. But this is not an icon, it's a painting. And then this has a nice little delicate darkness here that disappears as it goes up the nose. But there is a bit of a line there. And then the nose. Bit like that. That probably goes down. That's that's too light down there. It needs to go darker. I 
she has the, the red of the cheek is still super red. Why is it buffering? I just noticed that it's buffering on the, on the YouTube. I hope it's not lagging too bad. It is what it is. Oh, a little green box. We carry on. Okay, so what I was looking at here is that I curved this eye too far down. So I'm gonna get the dark color. And that's a bit too dark. Darker. Blending it so you can't see any of the brush strokes that I add in. I'm looking at the right eye and the uh, tear duct is a little off goes more like this and that actually probably comes out a little bit too far comes up and then I'm gonna grab the white or the light of uh, one of the lighter skin tone ones just cut that in a little bit And then here, this does something a little bit more like that. But then I just pulled that out way too far, so I'm gonna grab the brown and come back in and redefine it and darken it just a tad. But this crease was a little too pointy downy, it needed to point over. And I know that now is also off. Grab more dark. Okay. This is not as well defined as it should be. Oh, that was probably way too much black. It's a very triangular shape. Okay, I think that's good for now. Um, now to address this cheek that has probably been annoying you for the past, oh, I don't know, hour? How long has that been there? <laughs> I just need to get a little bit of the pink down. Um, but of course I'm not going to work on it. I'm going to work on the nose. Because that's what's on my brush. And then I think I actually, it needs to, that white, it needs to come out a little bit farther. Um, grab some of the warm shadow color. I tend to just start referring to paints as warm and cool or dark and light. Because once I establish sort of a pool of color that I'm happy with, I'm just going to keep going back to that pool for that same sort of color, um, which helps unify the painting if I'm not trying to make new mixes each time and just adjusting from one mix into the next mix into the next mix. This area feels wrong, but I just adjusted it and I liked it better from the farther away view. I guess it's okay. Can't really tell until I, until I go back. 
Um, not until I go back. I genuinely have no idea what I was just trying to say there. <laughs> Oops. Um, I think until I get the rest of the thing kind of more done, I won't be able to tell if I like that or not. Um, the puckering of the lip area. And now we go back over here. Um, and I'm going to want a brown. Adding a little bit more of the burnt umber. And starting to smooth these transitions in. I let the white come up too high here. But I don't want to get it as dark as I did up here. I do want to transition between the two. I am still kind of in some ways just laying color. This paint underneath is um, getting a little bit dry. And the time it took to do the eyes and whatnot. Um, this really thin layer is, 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 is not as juicy as it was when I first put it down. Um, but it is a little bit juicy so that the paint sticks better than on a perfectly dry canvas. This kind of comes in. Get the Cupid's bow. And just a slight darkening there. Oh, I wanted to fix the light there. I'm not going to yet. Um, so I'm trying to define this cheek to draw a transition. I should not be using this brush. This brush has too many different colors on it. But... I think it's a, yeah, no, I'm just gonna keep using it. <laughs> um, there's the double chin area. Which shows youth. Don't ask me why, but it do. You need to have this little delicate double chin transition in to help make people look younger. I mean, probably it's just like the pudginess of youth, I guess. Um, I mentioned it mostly because one of the new Bellinis that I'm going to paint in a few days, probably. Maybe not in a few days. I just did a Bellini. I kind of want to give it some time. But she looks so much like a high schooler. Like, Bellini crushed it with making Mary look like the 14-year-old that she was when she, the Annunciation. Um, and it's just from this tiny little, like, chub right under her chin. Um, that I, I saw the painting and I was like, she looks like somebody I knew in high school. Like, not in anyone in particular, but just, like, she looks like a high schooler. Um, which is kind of cool. But then as we get older, we lose a little bit of baby fat there. And we trim up, and our face changes. Um, but also that, which I just undefined, but this little shadow of a double chin is like the crease of our neck. And to leave it out um, as much as you want to, because, you know, ew, double chin or whatever. <laughs> um, it doesn't make the face look right. You need these weird creases. Um, that needs to go darker back there. And when that goes darker, I'll be able to better gauge what the cheek needs. I'm just grabbing, you know, the various darker colors that are on the palette. This actually does not, it's not that dark down there. There I go, adding too much paint. Okay, this transition, which I didn't want to touch earlier because it was super wet, is now a little bit tacky, and I can blend that better. Um, I need to add some white to this. We'll go up here um, and add some of the peachy pink. That's probably too much. That is definitely way too much white. Okay, hold up. That is good over here. 
Can we just appreciate the fact that this color and that color are the literal same color? But because of the <laughs> the colors next to it. Oh, did I just get painted my face? Because of the colors next to it, um, they look vastly different. That is... That'll never cease to amaze me. Okay, that's <laughs> this is just so light. What am I doing with this color? I don't know where to put it. <laughs> but I'm determined to use it. I guess it's okay here. And here. Um, and a little bit down here, I guess. Well, not there, though. That is so white. But I'll leave it. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Um, adding, I'm going to go back into this blue-yellow mix that I was using for... I think in the eyes. Which, now I'm looking at it, it doesn't need it up here as bit. I need to blend in. And then to blend out. And just like that, we're off the neck. <laughs> okay, this little area is bothering me. But I'm not going to fix it yet. Um, that transition to the clavicle. This does have a glow. A bounce light. Um, and then I'm going to go add more black. And umber. And a little bit of cad yellow. Ooh, that's really green. Okay, uh, I'm gonna move that down here now. And add some black. No, I didn't really get any black on there. And then I need a little bit of white. We'll take some of the peachy pink. Since that does have cad yellow and I wanted cad yellow in here, what does this look like? It's okay for that. It's better for that. Um, I'm going to add some umber and burnt umber to make it go brown. That's close to the color I want there. Okay, this jawline comes up a bit more. And this overall... Mm, I probably just added too much darkness on top of it. It does, that's actually quite, quite the glow. It looks like she has a mustache. <laughs> Whoopsies. We'll get there, we'll get there. Never fear. All part of the process. Gotta trust it. Okay. Um, let's grab this peachy pink brush. Grab some peachy pink. Problem is that it does not really that much peachy pink in her face at all. Um, Philippe did not like doing that. Um, he mostly just did, like, red and black. So I'm gonna add more of the rosy color. Blend that in with what's on the brush. It's not that light, though. Okay, but it is light right here. This is much darker. I'm gonna add... Grab a little bit of that black and white mix. Add some in here. Oh, now I have the low light color I wanted for right here. To make this nose shape a little bit better. to that shadow shape so I'll just blend it till it's smooth and let it be and then coming in here it's a bit too red but spreading it out helps a lot and then this has a sort of intermediate transition that I kind of lost but then it does have quite the transition right there right at the shadow line it is not smooth so you gotta keep it abrupt and then right here is very dark. Right there is light. And I recognize I just had my brush in the same exact position, but it, <laughs> it was what I was blending at the moment. Um, 
Blend, 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 blend. All right. Yep. There, blend this out so that it transitions nicer into the highlight of the cheek. And that's gonna go, wanna go darker. And now I think I'm gonna do the lips and then the chin. Do I blend that a bit better? Or maybe, no, I need to do that top part. Uh, I have lost the brush that that was, so I'm just gonna make it this brush. Wipe off some of the black that was on there and move this up again. There. This comes out like that. Um. Blend that brush stroke out. And blend this brush stroke out. That needs to be a bit darker. I'm gonna grab this darker mix and figure out right, it's not on both sides, it's just right in the transition between the nose, but then there's the shadow that's bigger. So just leave that there, grab that in there, and then I want a more brown, like a light, a little bit of a lighter brown, so I'm not painting with such aggressively black colors. Um, and then I don't have to blend as much to smooth it out. And because down here, it's a little, it is very dark, but it's a lot less super dark. And then I'm gonna need a little bit more black because it transitions to blue right down there. That might be a little bit high. Maybe not. My lips are pretty small. Ah! Blending the little dimple, or not the dimple, the um, puckering in of the mouth always gives me problems because you don't like it doesn't want to be a super like a dot um it needs to be blended smoothly like everything else on the face um but it's really easy to just make it too big of a shape. I mean, now look at it. It's much less scary looking than it did, where, how long ago was this? I think it's been almost an hour since it looked really scary. I just gotta trust the process. That is honestly, okay, now that I'm in a little bit of a better spot, I always get very nervous like showing and sharing the beginning transitions or just the beginning, like, you know, putting paint down on the canvas for the face. Just cause I know the way I do it is very chaotic. Um, and then like in a time lapse, that's all of what, like three seconds. Um, and then I'm blending and working on other things and finessing. Um, so in my time lapses on like Instagram and stuff and YouTube or not YouTube. Well, actually, yeah, I have a, I'm going to be having more time lapses on the YouTube channel. Um, pretty soon, but if you don't even notice that really scary spot, or if you do and you're like, oh, it's horrible, it goes away pretty fast, <laughs> but not in the live streams, it takes the time, but that's also the most satisfying part, it has been like my absolute favorite part about learning how to paint faces is just resting in that scariness of this looks like <laughs> really creepy um and just 
kind of focusing in on um yeah focusing in on whatever section i'm working on and just noticing the differences it's like playing not where's waldo but that one you know on the back of the cereal box where you have to find the different the differences between the two pictures it's like that except you're the one making the changes um which if you are an artist and you're watching this i would highly suggest or just have a word of encouragement that it's just it truly is just practice that's the only thing that you need to be good at anything which is the most frustrating thing to hear but having confidence in what it will look like um, really helps get over the the barriers of this looks so bad right now i should just stop I didn't talk about this yet, this stream, but that's really, okay, that, okay, whatever I'm doing right here, really bad. Um, <laughs> but uh, that's one thing I would really suggest with doing master copies and just um, tracing like I did. Uh, so I traced on from the, from this photo under here, uh, from a, like a printout of it on the, on the computer paper. Um, so I didn't have to worry about drawing. Everything is accurately in the right spot. And I can learn how to get from a messed up look to the final look a lot more accurately, which means that I'll be able to use that knowledge um, when I go to paint off a photo or off, um, you know, some compilation of imagery that I add and compile together to get, you know, whatever I'm wanting to paint. Um, so these kinds of things are super helpful for when I'm going to go in and find reference photos for my own, like, interpretations of the enunciation and all of that. But starting here is super helpful. Also, now it looks like she has a mustache. Yay! Yay, yay, yay. Um, but I'm going to leave it for a second. And work on this neck transition. It is much darker for much, like, I have too big of a light spot. This is very, like, pink and yellow. I think it's because you can really see a lot of the background coming through it. A lot of that umber color. Um, I haven't been using much of that yellow-white this time. That's very light. Okay, we're missing we're missing something here. Something here looks weird. Okay, this area has too many brush strokes that you can still see. As this here, this is missing now. The little pucker of a smile. The little notes of okay, well I put that in the wrong spot, but the little notes of highlight around the mouth is what really makes it look like someone is smiling or not. Um, I, don't, I noticed getting those things right really elevates it. Um, don't look at it right now though, because it's wrong. <laughs> this is such an interesting lips. He really doesn't put very much highlight um, on the lips. They're just very vibrantly red. Is very different from some of the other ones, other master copies that I've done. Usually the lip color is like so close to the rest of the skin that I like under, um, I under saturate it and they don't really stand out. Okay. Getting rid of these brush strokes and transitioning everything smoothly. Adding a little bit more of this whiter light color, because right now it's very pink down here. Um, so highlighting with white rather than with the peachy pink. Um, and add a little bit more black to here. I kind of lost some of that coolness. This skin tone is so strange. There's so many different ways to make skin tones. 
even of like of you know one artist's way of getting um I don't know where I'm going just like the it's more dependent on the lighting but it's so interesting how, how many different ways um how many like colors you can add to skin tone and have it look like skin even though I mean I'm adding blue essentially so much blue to her skin it's like I'm I was gonna say painting Gamora, just then Gamora is, is green. I don't know what I'm saying. Like Drax. <laughs> Get rid of some of that umber. Uh, I'm gonna need to do her dress. And the mantle. Okay, this is going up too far. I think I need to do another massaging layer with a thin, um, with a clean brush. Ooh, whoopsies. Holy cow, that really, that, that was fun. Okay, anyway, moving on, moving on. <laughs> Gonna get some cad red um, and some burnt umber. Um, Cause that makes a really good maroonish red, like I was saying, and it's really nice for lips. And I'm going to use that as the um, under color. And I really wonder, because the lips are so um, pink, I wonder if Philippe used more... What am I doing? I just went the wrong direction. I want more brown. Um, so alizarin crimson. I almost, I barely used alizarin this time. I just did it in this mix to warm up the shadows. But alizarin does fade over time, even though this is a really beautiful crimson color. Um, and so if it's not used properly and it's not kept in the shadows and you add it with white, it just, it, it literally disappears. Um, and we know that now, so it's good to apply, but some of the, you know, they didn't, people didn't always know that. Um, and I learned this from, okay, so I took a class, a portrait painting class, um, and we were doing Franz Hall, Zorn, and Sargent, um, but Franz Hall's, his, his, if you've ever seen his paintings, they're kind of, um, terrifying. I, really, I do not like what they look like, but uh, my teacher was saying how it's because he would have used, he did use uh, alizarin in the faces, so they would have been really rosy and beautiful um, when they first happened, but then over the, you know, centuries, I think it's the 1800s, it's not even that old, but they faded, um, and now they're not, you like barely can tell that they were, like the rosiness of the cheeks is just where the vermilion or the cad red would have been. Um, which is why I'm wondering if these lips were done with, um, for instance, vermilion. Which I believe they would have had vermilion in the 16th century. Or, what, 1600s. Um, I'm going to bring some of this up here since I lost that shadow shape and I need to de-emphasize some of these dark spots. And that, that needs to be a bit... The nose is casting a definitive cast shadow and I have made it a very smooth transition. But I'm going to finish the lips before I do that. Um, there's this like double transition that I'm not getting right. Okay, and then it needs to go darker right in that corner. I'm gonna add a little bit of black just to push the, the darkness. Okay, but of course there's too much paint on there and that didn't even do anything. So add some more black, really get it in the brush. And then tap it in. This I've got, <laughs> so this is actually difficult to see when I'm gesturing with the brush versus painting with the brush. Um, but I have a little bit too much of a, the lip has bled into the top of the, on the top lip, skin tone color area. This needs to go a little bit darker, this probably needs to go a little bit darker, I think this needs to go darker. So I'm just going to deposit the rest of that color here. Oh, 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 ah, ah, moving too much of the paint, moving too much of the paint, revealing the underpainting. 
Um, oh, this actually is probably a good color for right here. <laughs> You're back. And yes, lots of progress. <laughs> We're almost done with the face, uh, relatively speaking, because I've been working on it for quite some time, and there will be still some more. And it is almost noon. I do have to stop soon. Okay. <laughs> I got you. Um, I'm gonna grab a new brush, another filbert, and I'm gonna smooth these transitions. There's a lot of paint on here. It's gonna be a little bit more difficult than necessary. Actually, no, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna grab a round. And I'm gonna grab... Do, do, do. Just a little bit of um, everything. Just to put a little bit of paint on the brush. That's gonna be too dark. Yeah, I need a bit of a lighter color. Maybe some of that. Oh no, that needs to be yellow. Okay. Maybe I don't wanna use a round. And I'm just gonna make all of these transitions go away. Oh no. Okay, I need a bit of a darker color. I'm gonna grab some more browns so that this will stay warm as I blend these individual brush strokes that I've been putting back here. This also probably wants to go about a lot darker and just be a nice subtle glow rather than a really abrupt light color. But it does want to be warmer or more yellow, which I guess is warmer. Okay, no, I do want to use this brush, this clean brush. Um, make sure that doesn't fall off. And just with the little bits of the brush, the fly away um, bristles, I'm just, I'm, I'm like not even touching the canvas. And just letting the fly away bristle, bristles kind of blend the brush strokes into a smooth underpainting. And then wipe off. Yeah, I know. <laughs> the problem so this is it's a la prima um which is the technique and so it's wet into wet um and if i stop i'm not gonna be able to i have to put all of the paint back on in order to continue um i have to actually leave at 12 30 but you know it was gonna be 12 but i'm so close Right here, that paint is a little bit thicker because it has more white, so I can be a little bit more aggressive in smoothing. Because the white's a little bit stickier. Um, darker colors are more juicy. Lighter colors are a little more sticky. Which is also another good reason to keep your highlights out of the shadows. Okay, I need to wipe this off. <laughs> It takes a while to not get bored while painting. Um, not knowing where the painting is going always makes me like want to quit early. Um, but these ones, especially since I know I want to get it done in a day, it's a little easier to push through and be like, I'm just gonna keep going. And I want 
you guys to see the whole process. I don't want to be able to document the whole process instead of having to do two different videos. It does help a little bit. Um, I think I need... This brush has a little bit too much white on it. Nah, it doesn't. It's good. It's good. As long as I keep wiping it off. Okay. That's too light over here. Yep, too light. Uh, that's a good brush. This brown brush. It is exactly as black as it was when I painted it, when you saw it earlier. I haven't touched it. Uh, but the relative color is probably because there's more going on here. It looks lighter. It's kind of weird though, right? It is also slowly drying, uh, but it it's not dry yet. Ooh, that was dark. Grabbing some more darker colors. Trying to push this part side of the neck into the shadow. Right? <laughs> it does. Oh, at one point, um, I had some color on the brush and I did a little, I did a brush stroke over here in the dark side and then I did it over on the light side because I thought it was too light and they looked into, they, the, the two colors looked so different. Um, I don't know, it was like half an hour ago or something like that. Uh, but it's the relative colors, the colors that surround one color really change the look of the color you're adding, which is why I did like, for instance, the black first. So as I do the face, um, I can gauge the colors better um, because they're going to look brighter next to the black and the black's going to look lighter. Um, it's kind of, it is very weird though that our brains say that that it um, is lighter when it's, it's, it's the same. Um, no, it's cool. Very good. Ah! Was it a good day? Okay, that's too late. This shadow is too light over here. It comes out like that more. <laughs> I will mention it to her. <laughs> I won't get you in trouble. <laughs> I don't want to get you in trouble, rather. <laughs> I know. <laughs> um. Now this, okay, this is a very large shape in comparison to like the eyes and the nose. There's a lot going on here, even though it looks like it's one solid shape. <laughs> Bye now, have fun.
This is a little bit too um, contrasty. I put a little bit too much black in that area. So I'm going to grab a little bit of a lighter mix and just lay that in on top and smooth this transition away. It needs to be wider. I'm going to grab the lighter skin tone color. The peachy pink color. This little part, I just noticed that there's a little bit of errant brushes, brush strokes up there. Okay, so her shadow under the neck definitely goes a lot darker. So, back to that brush. I'm gonna lay in a little bit more of this shadowy color. And then I will smooth it together. Grab some more of the dark, come up here. There is that bit of the collarbone that I just kind of, I just, I think it needs to come up more over there. And here is more the darker side of it. So I'm thinking, since it is close to when I need to go, that I will continue this painting tomorrow. I know I said that yesterday about the other one. Um, but I think I will do the dress. And depending on how dry the face is, I might finesse it a little bit. And then, and I'll be done. So it'll probably be a short stream tomorrow. Because um, I also want to work on the still life. At some point, I got the base layer down on the still life, and that video at some point is gonna go on Instagram of the time lapse of that. But I want to get a little bit farther before I start sharing that process, so it's a little more cohesive. Um, I think it'll be a small stream tomorrow, but I'm just gonna do a little bit more on these shadows, and then call it a day, so I have time to clean my brushes. That transition is still so abrupt, though. It's bothering me. Um, I'm getting kind of a very warm color, so that when I add it in... Yeah, it's a bit better. And then gently just tapping it. Gently just making this more of a rounded transition, even though it is an abrupt turn into the shadow because her face is now that far over that it is in shadow, it needs to have a smoother transition. Um, this is the brush that has the same paint that I'm in right now. And then just a little bit here, smooth out this white. Needs to be lighter, needs to be lighter, needs to be much lighter. There you go. Okay, 
I'm prepping the transition into the um, the clothing for tomorrow, so keeping it kind of loose um, and going over just a little bit. I think this is the background color, or not the background color, the uh, neck color. Grabbing some random colors and I'm pulling it out once more. I feel like there's a giant glare on her face, but I know that's actually just what I painted. Um, right on the right on the back of the cheek. And it does kind of look like I did too much light closer up on the face. And he did a little bit less. So like this. Oops, that's a bit light. I need some of the darker colors. It's also rather warm. So adding in a little bit more of the reds, the cad red. And then a little bit more over. Pushing this glow more around the face instead of through the cheek, like I had it a little earlier. And now just making those transitions really smooth. <laughs> I say really like I'm actually gonna succeed in getting them really smooth. They're gonna get relatively smooth, but making them smoother. to go to the light. How does that look? Don't pull the plug on that. That's okay. Um, I want ochre. Kind of clean the brush, but I need a semi-light ochre to do this, it comes down farther. I'm also getting a glare on the screen. I could look up there, how does that look? Um. It wants to come up a little bit further. Move my hand all the way out of the way. Okay. Hmm. It looks too, like there's too much abrupt transitions. I think that I want to try attempting to, I want to try that tomorrow. I think that's good enough for now. I'm going to grab the, the clean brush that I was using and just do a little bit on the collarbone because it came up, it got a little skinny here.
and then making this a bit smoother. Just tapping. Tap, 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 tap. That has dark on it. Ah, clean it first. Okay. How does that look? Yeah. Okay, the next little, little messed up. Um... Also worked on it the least. Oh, I wanted to fix um, the Cupid's bow. And right here, it wants to be lighter. And just make that transition a little bit smoother there. Add in just a tiny bit of a highlight, even though he doesn't have it as much. And then smooth this out a little bit. How does that look? Okay, I'm happy enough with that for today as a first pass. So I'm going to do the clothes tomorrow in a short stream, and that'll be it. All right. Yay. This, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, it never ends. Though I got to say, if I do commit to doing this tomorrow, it's not going to be a short stream because it's going to be dry, and I'm going to be able to do a lot more finessing. Um... And making it good. I'm gonna grab the red and just to smooth this edge, adding that high chroma right there. Getting rid of a little bit of that paint. And then going to the black, fixing the other edge, and making that a really smooth transition. Yeah, I would say maybe it goes out a little, goes in a little bit more here. It's a little bit more black. Uh, her hair probably comes out a little bit farther too. <laughs> These are the parts of the painting that I haven't actually like, looked at in a since I did them as a whole. It's a little bit of a darker transition right here. Oh, you know what I'm missing? There's a little bit of a highlight right here, which is going to make her look like she's smiling a little bit more. I think I think I need to stop. Um, Okay, uh, I was really hoping that was a bit of an in-between color. transition is not smooth.
What is going on with her collarbone? Whoa! Drop that anywhere. I feel like I'm seeing... <laughs> seeing colors. Seeing transitions where there are none. Okay, I'm calling that a day. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye-bye. See you tomorrow. Bye.